Amen. Amen. Good morning, Metropolitan United Methodist Church, Trinity, and all of you that are tuning in on Facebook Live, YouTube, and are listening as well through our radio line. Let us open with a word of prayer. On this day, Lord, we enter into the season of hope as found on our Advent journey. Come, Lord Jesus, come as we wait in joyful anticipation, as we celebrate new possibilities and renewal in our spirits. Come, Lord Jesus, and may we be found, like the psalmist says, praising you with the sound of the trumpet, praising you with the harp and lyre, praising you with timbrel and dancing, praising you with the strings and pipe praising you with the clash of cymbals, praising you with resounding cymbals. For while we wait, Lord, let everything that has breath praise you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And now let us join together as we share in the call to worship. Most loving God, you keep your promises. Most gracious God, you keep your promises. Most life-giving God, you keep your promises. Most merciful God, you keep your promises. Jesus, Emmanuel, our Savior and our friend is coming. Our hope is in you, God, our life in you. We believe that Jesus Christ is working right now to save the world, and we want to follow Jesus. Grant us the strength and courage to share our hope with this hurting world. We thank you, loving God, that you keep your promises. Amen. And now we are delighted to share with you a children's Advent moment in video, followed by a musical selection. Thanks be to God. Welcome to our Christmas story. We tell it every year. How God came from heaven's glory came to make his home right here. Jesus, lying in a manger, born low for a messy bus, made us friends wants to be stronger, the Son of God who lives with us. Soon we'll meet the shepherds, wise men, and all the Christmas crew, and perhaps another story, one that's involving you. In our world of joy and darkness, in our lack of pain and care, Jesus came so we can know that God is everywhere. So our story starts as always with, Gabriel, with an angel, Gabriel, visiting the home of Mary. Was she busy? Who can tell? All today I'm cooking 
sweeping, feed the chickens, feed the dough. Honestly, it's never ending. Time to sit down for a while. But as soon as Mary rested, someone knocked upon her door. Abruptly, she went to answer, not expecting what she saw. Greetings, Mary. Highly favored, I have come to you from God with a message straight from heaven. Oh, you may look a little odd. Yes, I realize you're frightened. Seems to happen quite a lot. People see the wings and the halo, gives them a nasty, all a nasty shock. Would you like to get a glass of water? Would you sit down here? There's a love that is much better. Here's the message I've brought from God above. <coughs> Gabriel explained to Mary, God had chosen her to be the mother of a special baby, God's gift for humanity. Um, don't want to seem ungrateful, but there's just one tiny thing. I should mention, just in passing, see my man, no wedding ring. Mary, don't get all Beyonce. It's okay, the child will be not the son of your fiancé, but God, the one in the three. Yeah. Father God will send his spirit and become the Holy Son. So the child who will bear will be the Son of God, the Spirit One. Wow, that's quite a thing you're asking. God himself will come to stay, but I'm the Lord God's servant. Let it happen as you say. So the angel bowed and looked her. Mary sat and drank some tea. <laughs> Called up her fiance Joseph. What would his reaction be? For him to open the Advent season is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let's sing together. <laughs> some captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appears. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee O Israel, O come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows pull. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come thou root of Jesse's tree, an ensign of thy Before the ruler silent fall, all people on thy mercy call. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Come thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly hope. The captives from their prison free and conquer death's deep misery. 
Good morning. Hope everyone is well this day. Um, I want to begin this morning by thanking June Acock for preparing the exterior of the church this morning and for hanging up the, the banners for our Advent celebration this week. She came up, I think, yesterday and, uh, and did that for us. And thank you. Thank you, June. I'm not sure which camera I'm supposed to look here, right, Joe? Hi. <laughs> I was looking at the people who were sitting out there helping uh, put together the, the worship service for us. Um, preparing for today's service, I read what others had to say about hope. That is kind of the theme of Advent for us this year. It's the theme of Advent every year, actually. One ambitious preacher preached through the entire Advent season of 2019 on the theme of preparing for 2020. His community had been devastated, right? Joe laughed. His community had been devastated by a hurricane in early fall 2019. And while people approached the Christmas season, they continued to clean up from the storm, uh, all the debris, move trees from houses, rebuild businesses, and rebuild their lives. 2020 would be different, he said. So I'm wondering how those hope-filled preparations worked out for them. I remember thinking in December 2019 and in January 2020, this year, this year will be a turning point towards a future of purpose and expanded ministry for Trinity United Methodist Church. It was an exciting time filled with promise. Do you remember what your plans were in December of 2019 and January 2020? Some of my most significant plans changed on a dime last March. And the year has continued to change over and over and over as many of us still attempted to find scraps of normalcy in the midst of all the upheaval. I remember this day, the day following 9-11. Uh, some of you will remember that. Others of you may not have been born yet. But I remember I remarked to a friend, everything is changed now. And the friend replied, everything is always changing, Nancy. That's just the way life is. And of course, that statement is true. Everything does change. Every moment presents an opportunity for us. And we can set our eyes in a new direction if we like. That, that, that's why we make plans so we can do something new and, and different. The remarks from my friend, however, were hollow, considering the enormity and complexity of that particular crisis. Here we are today, closing in on the most wonderful time of the year, as the Christmas song proclaims, and we continue to seek out scraps of normalcy within this context that is the year 2020. I wonder what direction we can anticipate following this year of unprecedented everything. Back in October, I was thinking, and Steve and I had this conversation, perhaps we could put on our voting ballot for November for the election while we were choosing community leaders and national leaders and, and uh, new legislation. Maybe we could vote to remove the word unprecedented from the English language. Obviously, as things continue to unfold in 2020 since that day, we would have had to find another word to replace unprecedented. I'm still looking for the scraps of normal. I have heard people talk about these days and make comments about the end times about which Jesus spoke in the book of Mark. Have you heard or read these words from Mark chapter 13? This is Jesus talking. In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, 
and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in heavens will be shaken. Thus verses 24 and 25 in Mark 13. We have indeed had quite a year with so much suffering and for a variety of reasons. And now the days do grow shorter and, and darker, similar to the words that Jesus spoke. Looking at the context in which the verses in, Mark's are, the verses in Mark are written, scholars tell us this book was written about 40 years after Jesus' death, right after the fall of the temple in Jerusalem which would have been a 9-11 event for them, or maybe it would have been a pandemic, economic, social unrest, divisive election cycle, social distancing, isolating event for them. Mark writes to a group of Christians who are wrestling with the existential questions in light of traumatic events occurring around them. Their questions are likely some of the same questions we may hear from others and we may hear from ourselves. Is God not powerful after all? Has God rejected us? Does not God not care about our sacred spaces and our sacred ways of living? Looking at the fields and the countryside surrounding us here in Rome, Georgia, now fallow following summer's harvest, dark and bare, seemingly lifeless. These words had me wondering about this passage in Mark and about the, the people who had experienced such devastating historical events during his time. After the sun goes dark and the moon fades away and all the stars fall, after the tremors of the heavens die down, after everything changes, what happens? To all these are those broken pieces of people's lives. What happens to all the torn and tattered shreds of the messes that we make for ourselves? Flora Slauson Ulner asked this question, what does God do with the useless leftovers of the universe, the unwanted, unlovely brokenness? And Jesus offers us this in Mark following the apocalyptic words. He says, then God will send out the angels and gather up the people from the four winds, from the ends of the earth, and from the ends of heaven. God will gather up. I love that image of being gathered up by God, with, along with others who so need a good word, a compassionate listening. And once gathered, God will transform those gathered people and all those messes into something new and, and beautiful. God prioritizes healing and relationships, and God's offering of healing and relationship is something that human imagination generally falls short of understanding. And because of that, Humans have difficulty imagining that God can actually heal us and mend relationships from such a motley assembly of brokenness. I think, really, I want to experience that being gathered up by God. What about you? Healed and mended relationships, moving beyond what hurts us, what broke us yesterday, and living into God's good future, being gathered up together. Jesus goes on to say in the book of Mark, from the fig tree learn its, le from the fig tree learn its lesson. As its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that God is near at the very gates. 
all those fallen leaves that we have been raking or blowing around out at our yard or just blowing around in our yard or watching skip down the street will eventually become part of the soil and nutrients that feed the very trees from which they fell. And all the broken pieces of humanity and our current situation will be gathered up and reassembled into something new and creative, something we likely have difficulty imagining right now. And that might actually make us fearful because we can't imagine that future. And still, we know God is always doing something new. Amen? Jesus' words tell us what we seem, what seems to be a hard truth at first. God is not contained only in sacred buildings made by human hands. Remember, Mark was writing right after the fall of all of the, the temple in Jerusalem. And so the message being, part of the message being, that God is not just contained in our sacred spaces. God is not contained only in our sacred traditions created by earthbound vision. God's power transcends the temple. God's power transcends our traditions, our status quo, our expectations, our desire for at least a scrap of normal. So when or if we succumb to despair, when those things we hold dear fall, we have this promise. God is doing a new thing, bringing to us a future made up of those gathered, broken pieces. And this is good news for all people everywhere. I read this one time, and I didn't write down who the author is, so please bear with me. This is not original. What better message of hope for thrown away and abandoned people, for broken, fragmented humanity, for individuals, for individual shattered dreams, shattered hopes, shattered trust, all the shards of lives which never have been realized or fulfilled in wholeness. The core of Jesus' mission, the more, more profound than even healing and restoration, more profound even than healing and restoration, is transformation. When reformed by God's hand, the world and we are fulfilled and empowered in a way we never imagined possible. Jesus' words are so important. They help us understand how we are to live while we wait, this Advent waiting. We are to remain alert. We are to keep our eyes opened and our minds tuned to God, and we will already see that God is right here among us. And we will catch glimpses of God's work in us, through us, and among us. And we are invited during this time of waiting always to live into this work, this work of hope for the world. Advent is also a time of yearning, a time of anticipating, a time of preparing. And so I have three questions for you. What do you yearn for this season? What are you anticipating? And how are you preparing? I have a suggestion for you. You might write down the answer to those three questions in the comment section on Facebook or on YouTube. How awesome it would be for us to know what each other is yearning for and anticipating and preparing for. Can you imagine sharing that with others? And knowing these things about each other means that we can pray for each other. It means we can hold each other accountable through this season. 
And it means we can know how God is working in the lives of our sisters and brothers in faith. Does this feel too vulnerable to share these things? How does your feeling of vulnerability compare to the vulnerability of God who came to earth knowing already what would occur when he offers his best to the world? Yearning, anticipating, preparing. The prophet Isaiah lived in a dangerous time. If he lived today and had access to television, this is what I imagine he would do. Anytime he turned on the TV, he would hear about another natural disaster or a crazy, undignified political ad or unrest due to injustice. And you could probably add to the list all of these creating anxiety and depression and and hopelessness. Isaiah lived in a time filled with anxiety. The Assyrian army was ready to destroy and take over the people. And here is Isaiah in the midst of all of this. First of all, telling the people the truth about themselves. The people are failing to take serious God's priority for the poor, the immigrant, the widow, the orphan. The people are failing to seek justice, to live humbly and in gratitude to God. And they are failing to love. And still... The prophet Isaiah is preaching hope, sharing from God's imagination of who the people really could be. He tells the people, one day men will no longer need swords. One day nations will not declare war. One day peace will reign from Zion. Isaiah was very dramatic. He believed in the power of hope. God had given him insight into God's own imagination for human life on earth. Isaiah told the people in in chapter 9, For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah offers these words of hope in the midst of a national crisis. He doesn't write off their current circumstance and crisis as change that happens every day, like my friend did. He offers his words, he offers his life as a witness to the hope that comes from God, as a witness to his hope in God, as a witness that God has hope for his people. And so today, we light the candle of hope in our Advent wreath. And we rededicate our lives to this hope. This candle of hope is a candle for the prophet Isaiah who allowed hope to define his views of the world in a very difficult time. Let us pray. Dear God, as we light this prophecy candle of hope and are grateful for Jesus, give us knowledge to understand what you have spoken through the ages by your prophets. Give us strength and hope to wait until that time comes to pass. Amen. My friends, we can live in the hope of a restored tomorrow. We can be part of God's work today, God's restoration today, God's transformation today. Let us pray. Be not anxious, you tell us, Lord, fear not. Your messengers repeat to your terrified children over and over again. 
My peace I give to you, Jesus assures us, and still. In this time and during this season, our anxiety runs rampant. So many earthbound leaders stoke fear and countless justified worries keep us up at night. And through it all, we ask how we can walk by faith and not by sight. We want to live a life in which your perfect love casts out fear and still we confess, merciful God, that we are afraid. Unsure of what might come at us next, uncertain how we can endure the relentless suffering and upheaval all around us and right before us. And we cry out, how long, O oh Lord? Help us, Lord, to be still. And to know that you are God. Help us to remember your promise. That when we ask or seek, you will be right there. Quiet in us any voice but your own. Help us give to you those burdens we can no longer care so that we can be your people of hope. Lord, in this day and in this time, we need you every hour. Be with us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, and as we pray it, help it to be our own. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn has come, Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Well, we won't go from this place except for those of us who are here. <laughs> but you will go from your place. Go into the world with, with hope. And where you can't find hope, I, I do pray that you will reach out to someone who can walk through your despair with you so that we can all, each one of us, be a part of, of the gathering up of the healing of this world and the, the mending of relationships through this time. Go now in peace. Amen.